Okay, first, first thing, there's uh, one third of the class missing. So I have to start thinking about the recordings and uh, stopping them or slowing them down or doing something about it, okay? Because there's no point if the class is empty and I'm here teaching and recording for you, okay? So if you see your friends that are chilling right now, <laughs> tell them to come to class, okay? Uh, second thing, so for Achieve, um, People ask me about some clarifications for Achieve. So if you go on your account, if you have an account, uh, you'll probably see this page here. I will never assign anything to do that counts on here. But if you go on course content right here, and then you go in chapter, let's say one, you can go read the book. You have some resources like videos, but uh, whatever. And then the assessment here, it's called adaptive quiz, but in reality, it's just questions for you to solve, okay? And this is pretty cool because when you start the activity, you can actually go read the book at the section where it talks about this, okay? This is important if you want to practice more than just the tutorials um, and reading the book, okay? Let's go, people. This is for you. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to say, so for the tutorials, I'm assigning the problems to you a week in advance. You can wait until the tutorial and then do them at the tutorial and do only the problem that's assigned to you. But if you want to do well on the exam, you should practice those problems all by yourself, okay? It's just when you're in, tut in the tutorial, you get to see the answers, you get to actually discuss between uh, each, uh, each other, which is important for you because you can then teach it to the other person or explain to the other person and then it makes it clear in your head, okay? Um, I... I found the equivalents for the problems. So if you have the 11th edition, I'll be posting it. Uh, where's the other page? One second, not find it. So I'll be posting it like this. So 72 for 12th edition means 60 for 11th, okay? This way you don't have to go to the library every, every week to get the problems, okay? Um, what else? What else, what else? Uh, Okay, so next week the quizzes will begin. Don't freak out, they're gonna be easy. The, the thing with the quizzes is just to get you to practice, okay? So that you're ready for the exam. Because in the tutorial, you're doing one problem, right? Sometimes two, and you have like 30 minutes for it. So the quiz tells me how much you can do um, in a specific amount of time. I still haven't decided that, so that in the exam, I can gauge the level, okay? Um, the other thing is, we will have, there's about three weeks left before, four weeks, so a month before the midterm and three weeks before the guest lecture. Since the guest lecture is on a Thursday, I was thinking that they may be doing a review session for before the midterm because the midterm is on Tuesday. Okay, so we'll do 30 minutes with the guest lecturer and then um, the rest uh, review. Okay, so bring your questions um, and whatever uh, you need to be covered. Okay, if you want, even you can send me like ahead of time so I can prepare slides related to whatever you want to review, okay? Good, the other thing, the other thing, the other thing. YouTube, um, actually, you know what, let me just go on Moodle. So if you go here, and then you click here, you'll find all the lectures. Look at this beautiful thing. <laughs> I was so happy making the thumbnails there. I feel like a YouTube star, you know? <laughs> okay, so the lectures uh, the lectures are here, okay? I'll be posting them. Uh, I'll try to do it the next day after the lecture. If I see that the group becomes smaller and smaller, I'm gonna have to stop it and just post them the day before the midterm or the day before the final, okay? University, uh, I want people to come. Uh, the university wants people to come. If it was for me, we can do it from home, but you know, sometimes you have to force students to you know, attend and work and study at home, okay? If you do this at home, and then you send me 10,000 emails, come on, you know? <laughs> come to the lecture and, uh, and do that there, okay? That's that. What else, what else? Last lecture, I went super fast, okay? Uh, and this is because uh, I'm not, you know, sometimes I forget that I'm teaching, uh, you know, first year students, so if it makes sense in my head, I just go and don't stop, okay? Uh, but I realized that after the lecture, so we're gonna fix that today with 65 slides. <laughs> uh, I went super in depth so that you can um, 
you can understand what's happening there. Uh, today we're going to cover a few points. The first point uh, will be mitosis, meiosis. So I'm going to start like super basic and then we're going to talk about alleles, how they're transferred to the offspring and then how the offspring become deployed, etc. Okay. And this way you will have an idea of how crosses happen and all that. Okay. Good. Questions? No? Everything clear? Okay. So life cycle. You guys know this, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Um, so, so humans, okay, and uh, many plants, uh, they have two, actually most organisms have a diploid and a haploid state, okay? The plants sometimes have a triploid state. So it's uh, an intermediate state where uh, the cell becomes triploid, okay? But for us, what we're interested in, so I'll use the humans as example because this is the one that you're most uh, aware of and then we'll uh, we'll then talk about the others okay so for humans as an adult you produce gametes okay so your the cell the precursor to the gametes is diploid so it has two copies of each of each um, gene okay and the reason for that is that you get one set of chromosomes from your dad one from your mom and that forms the zygote which then let me get the laser pointer like this you see it okay so you get the zygote, which is basically the fusion between egg and sperm, and that becomes diploid. And then to make the fetus, you will just replicate that cell nonstop. Okay, uh, it will re replicate into two, four, eight, and so on. Okay, and this you can, you will probably learn it. No, you will learn it in uh, three six six. Is anybody taking three six six? Probably not. Huh? Okay, that's a pretty cool course. It's related to how you develop and how different organisms de develop. So if you want to know how you start from one cell and then go to the full organism, this is actually pretty nice, okay? You learn about embryogenesis, hormones, all that stuff, okay? Good. What's uh, our concern for this course um, is meiosis uh, and mitosis. It's two types of cell division. Meiosis is the type of division where you will end up, we will start with one cell and then end up with four different cells. And it's the type of cell division that divides the genome by two, not the genome, but basically it splits it into two. So you go from diploid to haploid, okay? So meiosis starts with one diploid cell and produces four gametes that are haploid, okay? Mitosis is uh, another way of dividing the cells, but this one here, it gives you two daughter cells that are identical to the mother cell, okay? And this is important for regeneration of parts of your body, like skin, whatever, okay? Meiosis mostly happens for gametes, okay? Good. So let's go a little bit in depth here uh, in terms of genetics, okay? So if we start with the myocyte, this is the precursor to sperm and egg, okay? It's in the gonads. Uh, um, it's in the gonads for males it's always in division non-stop okay throughout their whole life for females most of the time it's done before um, before birth so at the fetal stage and that's where most of your eggs are produced and then from there um, they decrease until you reach menopause okay which is by 50 around there okay so the myocytes for the f for uh, males are always there and they're constant meiosis, while female, most of them, it's before birth and then some after birth, okay? And so these meiocytes, where do they come from? They come from your parents, okay? So half of the genome is from your dad, half from your mom. Does that make sense up to now? Easy, simple, okay. What happens then is that uh, DNA is replicated. When you need to form these gametes, DNA is replicated. So you start with two copies of each gene, and then you end up with four copies, okay? This happens at the synthesis or DNA replication stage of the cell cycle, okay? So if you look here, now you have four copies of each gene. Does that make sense? So here you have one from your mom, one from your dad. This is a chromosome, okay? But inside of the chromosome, there is hundreds of genes, okay? And they're the same on both sides. Um, then there's a duplication event. So you end up with four chromosomes for the same chromosome. So four, four, four replicates, I guess, of the same chromosome. Um, so that means four copies of each gene that you have, okay? And since I told you we have 20,000 genes in the human genome, at this stage here, you have 40,000 copies. And at this one you have, times two, 80,000 copies, 
okay? Then meiosis one happens. Meiosis one happens, uh, so there's a division of the cell to produce the intermediate stage there. And this division basically will take the duplicate from your dad alone, the duplicate from your mom alone, and then we'll split them again into meiosis number two to produce these gametes here at the end. Okay? So that makes sense up to now? One important thing that you have to focus on here is the position of the chromosomes, okay? This is very different compared to mitosis, um, and it allows for something called a crossover, which we'll talk about like later on in the slides, okay? So let's go in depth, okay? I wrote everything to try to be clear, but basically you have on, in the blue, you have a chromosome from mom that contains many genes. The dad one is the red one, has the same amount of genes, and the same genes actually, okay? After replication, you end up with four copies, two from mom, two from dad. Make sense? We have 23 chromosomes. So at this stage, how many do we have? 23 unique. So at this stage, we have 46. And then when it duplicates, we have? That's it. Excellent. Oh, sorry. OK. So now alleles. Where do alleles come in and then genes come in? So let's take, for example, hypothetical gene for hair color. OK. The hair color is not determined only by one gene, but let's act like it's controlled by one gene, okay? So the gene for hair color, we call it A in this example, but you could call it H whatever, okay? Um, if you got one copy of, of that gene from your mom and one from your dad, so then you have two copies at this stage, right? Now, what's up with the big A and small A? Big A means that you have and small a means you have two different variations of the same gene, okay? So let's say, for example, big A gives you black hair or brown hair, and then small a gives you blonde hair, okay? So these are, the variations are called alleles, okay? In this case, we say that the meiocyte or myocyte, I don't know how to pronounce it, is heterozygous for the hair color gene because it has one copy that is dominant and one copy that is recessive. Okay, one from mom, one from dad. Then the replication happens, so you just duplicate the whole thing, right? And you end up with two big A and two small A, two which is, um, wait, what did I want to say here? Same variation. So in the case where the parents provide the same copy, so let's say you had two big A's here, one because mom and dad have the exact same hair color and the same exact allele then it would be called homozygous dominant, right? If you had two small A's, so the two variations for um, blonde hair, for example, you would end up with homozygous recessive, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Next step. So crossover is a way that the body uses to kind of create uh, variation genetically. Okay, this only happens in meiosis because in meiosis, the chromosome from dad and mom, they come in a line, not like this, but one on top of each other. Okay, and because they're close to each other, they have sequences, the sequences are the same, right? So what happens is that sometimes they bind to each other and then flip. Make sense? This flip here then will create a modified uh, replicate of your dad's chromosome by adding some piece from the mom, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, this crossover here is one of the most important part for making all of you guys uh, unique, okay? If this did not happen, um, we'd probably all look very close, <laughs> okay? So this is a very important uh, thing, and this only happens in meiosis, remember that, and meiosis one, <laughs> exam question, <laughs> okay? Probably, but I don't know, I'm gonna phrase it differently, <laughs> okay? Um, and then same thing happens with the replicate of the uh, mom chromosome. There is a part from the dad's chromosome, okay? If gene A is on this side here, then it's inher in inherited normally, okay? But if sometimes it's on this side here and there's a crossover that happens, then uh, things get messed up, okay? We're going to learn this uh, next week, okay? It's called uh, linked uh, inheritance, okay? Good. What else? Okay, so crossover happened, meiosis one happened. Now we have to form the gametes from the uh, two cells that were generated. 
So this one here, the two cells that were generated. So now we have to form the gametes. So there's a second cell division, but no replication of DNA, okay? Replication only happens before meiosis one, okay? So then you end up with four different gametes produced from one myocyte, okay? And each one carries a copy of the gene. Because there's a replication event, can you, do you see the recording thing? Okay, I will have to, let me see, there you go. Uh, where do I show you what? Please hide that. Uh, always hide. There you go. Okay, so back to this. So when you're producing these four, four gametes, you'll get two gametes that have the copy of the gene from your dad, this one and this one, and then you'll have two copies that come from your mom, okay, this one and this one. And this leads to Mendel's first law of equal segregation. So the alleles have equal, equal chance of being segregated into different gametes. Okay. Um, what else? Just remember that meiosis produces four haploid cells starting from one diploid cell. And it's usually you, uh, important for gamete formation. The other cells in your body, they all undergo, most of them undergo mitosis because you need to just create duplicates of that cell to regenerate your skin cells, um, which happens, uh, I think, about every 30 days or something like this, or your muscles, if you're working out, for example, then it happens almost after, after every workout, okay? Make sense? Good. Second stage. So then you have your gametes. Fertilization happens, okay? So let's just take these two different gametes as an example. Um, the color here doesn't mean anything. Uh, but it's useless, okay? This is, was related to the previous example, but we can say the female gamete doesn't mean that it only gets the chromosome from the mom, okay? It could also be red here and blue here, okay? Don't make that mistake, okay? So let's say you get a, so when fertilization happens, then you end up producing the first filial generation, which is your zygote that then becomes embryo and then infant, okay? So this is where the 2N becomes, and then you're, uh, happens and then you end up just getting again your uh, diploid cell what else did I want to say so we s so this individual here your f1 generation is basically just your offspring for plants or a child or whatever okay um, and then this individual will grow up and then produce gametes and then the cycle just keeps happening okay so basic stuff now the stuff that was uh, not clear last lecture uh, yeah Could have been any what, sorry? Exactly, exactly. You can, uh, so let's say, uh, so let's say this is dad, okay? You could be any of these four. And then let's, for example, this is also mom, so you have the exact same thing. And then they produce gametes. It could be any of these linked with any of the mom, okay? Questions? No? Okay. Back to the stuff that was not clear last lecture. So if we look at this, let's say for example, the zygote that was produced has uh, one chromosome from dad that is big A, one chromosome from mom that is big A. So then we say that this individual is homozygous dominant for the hair color gene A, because it has two identical alleles, which are variations of the same gene. Um, yeah, two identical alleles. So the way we write this, is on the right here. So you can either write A, big A slash big A, which just means two alleles of the same gene, one from dad, one from mom. You can also use plus plus, but this only works if you're working into single gene inheritance because you can just, uh, actually no, it works for, for uh, other genes, okay? Because you'll know that uh, the recessive will have a letter and then the uh, wild type will be a plus, okay? Um, so you can also use it for uh, multiple genes. Or you can write it like this. All these mean the same thing. If it's recessive, so two copies that are recessive like this, so one from mom, one from dad, which are small a's, then we say that it's homozygous recessive for the gene A because it has identical alleles, okay? And then the convention for writing this genotype is only one of them, which is small a slash small a. 
Some people like to remove the slash. You can also just remove it. It means the same thing. So big A, big A next to each other, it means the same thing. OK? Clear? Better than last time? <laughs> Good. <laughs> OK, last one, the heterozygote. So if you have one copy from dad that is big A and one copy from mom, small A, then we call this guy or this individual heterozygous for the gene A. And then the convention for writing it is either big A, small A with a slash in between, a plus slash A, or A plus slash A. OK? Easy? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's the wild type uh, version of the gene. OK? OK. Second cell division. Type. Okay, forget what I just told you. <laughs> now we need to see it, uh, see something different. Okay, yeah. No. Uh, so, okay, that's a very good question. So, wild type. So, if the mutation, for example, is dom a dominant mutation, then you'll see it all the time in the in the po in the population, basically, right? Um, wild type. Wild type is kind of the healthy the healthy variant of that gene okay it doesn't mean it's the most expressed okay in the case of a dominant mutation uh, then you would have which causes a disease yeah yeah <laughs> which causes it one second <laughs> which causes a disease then uh, then uh, let me think yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so wild type doesn't necessarily mean always uh, dominant, okay? The dominant phenotype could, could be causing the disease, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the assumption for question sixty-seven, right? Uh, or sixty-five? Okay, so you were asked to. I see, I see, I see, I see your question. Um, so then, I have to think about it. Okay, I will uh, come after class and I'll uh, I'll see what it is. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. In the blue? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So the, if the crossover, so we'll see crossovers next week. Uh, depending on where, where the gene is on the chromosome, then you'll have uh, crossovers that happen. And then you'll produce these recombinant chromosomes, which are not like the parental. And they're like uh, new, new, new ways of uh, having the chromosome, okay? Uh, we'll see the, this next lecture. Okay, mitosis. So for mitosis, it's somewhat similar. There's a few differences that I have to show you. The first thing is that when you start with mitosis, you have the same thing. A diploid, one from dad, chromosome one from dad, chromosome two from mom. They both have the same number of genes, um, but not necessarily the same variants of each gene. OK, the alleles, basically. Then there's a replication that happens. The, uh, yeah, so there's a replication that happens. So you end up with a 4N stage after the DNA replica uh, replicates. So that means four copies of the same gene, two from dad, two from mom. So up to now, it's the same thing, OK? Then what happens is that the chromosomes, they will align along the equatorial plane of the cell. And they will align one on top of each other, OK? not. Uh, so not one on top of each other, one next to each other, OK? And what this does is that it allows when the cell to divide, it will allow it to make two similar cells. If they were one on top of each other, it will separate them like this. And then the dads will go alone, the mom will go alone, and then you'll have two. So this thing here. So if they're one on top of each other, first they can do crossover because they're 
one on top of each other. And the second thing, um, they will produce four gametes that will separate the dad alone, the mom alone, okay? In this case, we're trying to make the exact same cell twice from the mother cell, okay? And so they will align one next to each other, other like this. So this doesn't allow for crossover. Why? Because the DNA is not next to each other. Uh, so the similar sequences are not next to each other. So they can't bind and then do the crossover, okay? So that's the first thing. So then what happens is that there is a or there's a spindle that forms. So the spindle is just a group of proteins that pull out each, each chromosome to one side. And then because they are one next to each other, you'll end up getting one from dad and one from mom. Okay? Does that make sense? So if you look, you look at here, this, this here is from dad, let's say, which is the duplicate of this. This is from mom, duplicate of this one here. And then they align. This one here is the two copies from dad. This one here is the two copies from mom. And if we're trying to make a cell that is identical to this one here, then we need to replicate exactly that, which means one copy from mom, one copy from dad. And this happens right here when you pull them to each side. Okay, blue one, let's say it's mom. Orange one is dad. And then you pull the, what we, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the white part is where the spindle uh, fiber is bind, and it's called the centromere. Okay. I don't want to go into like anaphase, metaphase, all that stuff, because it's not really necessary for this course. The idea is just the initial cell and then what you produce from it and how the alleles go from that stage to that stage. Okay. You'll learn in cell bio all of this, okay, uh, related to the centromeres and actin and dianin and all that stuff okay uh, which is not necessary for this course here the focus is really just the genetics okay so I don't really care if you know what anaphase well I do but <laughs> if uh, you know what anaphase is or not okay as long as you know that for meiotosis you start with a diploid cell and you produce two copies that are identical to it um, at the end well meiosis you produce four haploid gametes and it's usually used for you know producing your uh, sex cells Okay, so uh, then the cells divide and you end up with two daughter cells that are exactly the same as the initial cell. Well, exactly. It's not always like that, but you know. Just remember, the plane here doesn't allow for crossover. And so there's almost no variation between the mother cell and the daughter cells. While the other option for meiosis is there's a crossover and then there's variation that happens and one produces gametes, four of them, one produces two daughter cells that are identical. Yep. Yep. Uh, they will naturally uh, do that because the sequences kind of bind to each other and then they just flip. Okay. It's just some chemistry stuff. Okay. Um, Good. Now, conventions again. So let's start with the, uh, let's take the same hypothetical gene or another one for height, okay? Height is not determined by one gene, but let's assume for this example, it's determined by the gene A, okay? So let's say you have a copy from your dad, which is big A, so you're super tall or super short, choose one, okay? <laughs> and then one copy from your mom, the small A, which makes you short, okay, for example. Then there's replication that happens. And so you end up with uh, two big A's from dad, two big small A's from mom. So this, until now, it's the same thing as meiosis. Now the difference is here, at this stage here. In this case, you're trying to produce the same cell as the initial mother cell. So you'll have one copy from mom go to one cell, one copy from dad go to the same cell, and then that happens basically twice. Does that make sense? Easy. Okay, so the conventions to write this is exactly the same thing as earlier. So big A slash small A plus slash A or A, uh, A plus slash A, okay? Easy? Don't forget, some people like to remove the slash. This works here in this case. And I wrote it right here. Okay. Now we make it more complicated. Let's assume this cell doesn't have only one chromosome, but has five chromosomes, okay? 
So you have five chromosomes from dad, five, five from mom. And they're the exact same chromosomes for in terms of genes, but they have different variants of the same genes, okay? So in that case, um, the inheritance for these genes does not depend on the segregation of the chromosomes by itself, but depends on where they're located relative to each other, okay? Situation number one, let's take for example a hypothetical gene for hair color A and then the height is B. So if they are on different chromosomes, so the copy from dad for A, the copy from mom, copy from dad, copy from mom, okay, they're on different chromosomes. In this case, they will follow Mendel's second law of inheritance, which is the law of independent assortment, okay? This organism here that we are seeing right here, uh, is heterozygous for both genes because it has one dominant allele for hair, co hair color and one recessive allele for hair color from the mom. And then it has the same situation for the um, gene that controls the height. Easy? Easy? Good. Conventions. How do you write this? So because they're on different chromosomes, we write it like this. So forget this right side here. First, let's just look at the A gene. So the A gene, big A, small a, you can either remove the slash or leave it like this. Then you have this semicolon. Semicolon means that both genes being discussed in this situation are on different chromosomes. And then we do the same for B slash B. Make sense? And then obviously these apply to it, okay? I'm just not gonna write all of them here. So how do they assort now? This is following the second law of independent assortment from Mendel, okay? And we'll talk about that in a second. So independent assortment. Now imagine this cell is producing gametes. Let's say this is our initial myocyte with two genes that we are studying, okay? So because it's independent assortment, when there's a replication happening and whatnot, you'll end up taking either this chromosome with this one, this one with this one, uh, sorry, this one with this one, et cetera, okay? So you can mix both genes. Does that make sense? Yep. No, A is, uh, did I write here? So A is for hair color and B is for height. Okay, yeah. So the gametes you produce here are the following, either big A, big B, and don't make the mistake of thinking that you need to absolutely carry one from dad and one from mom, no. You can carry both from dad, okay? Does that make sense? Easy? No? Yeah? Sorry? Uh, no, no. Uh, so in your cell you have, so when the spindle forms, on the cell, so it comes from both sides, right? So then what happens is that the spindle could still grab the A from dad and A and B from mom, uh, sorry, A from dad and B from dad and bring it into one cell. Or it can, the, the fiber can go further and grab the one from mom, does that make sense? And one from dad, right? So the spindle just goes at random. And because it's random, yep. Oh, uh, well the cell will usually die if it doesn't have the specific genetic material, okay? Um, you kind of, there's a, a way for the cell to live and if you don't have it, you end up, the cell will probably die. So, yeah? Right, so let's say, okay, so this is the myocyte that I was talking about where is it? Right here. The myocyte itself contains two copies of each gene, one from dad, one from mom, okay? When you're inheriting this guy, you can either get, get the one from dad or one from mom, right? Does that make sense up to now? Okay, when you have two genes or three genes that are on different chromosomes, then you don't necessarily just get uh, one sex or the other. You can grab one from mom and one from dad. So we're thinking about the genes relative to each other and how they end up in a, in a gamete, okay? So because we have, 
because we have here two genes that are on different chromosomes, and we have the dad's copy and the mom copy, right? When, we, when this person produces the gametes, the gametes will be split, this thing will be split into four, okay? Through meiosis. And so now we need to assort the A with B, the A gene with the B gene. So there's different ways of doing it. The cell, when it's starting to pull out the chromosomes, it can pull this one, the big A, with the big B or the big A with the small B, right? It doesn't think, oh, this is mom, so let's grab it like this, and then this is dad, let's separate them. It just goes at random, okay? Make sense? Yeah. If this is the zygote, Oh, no, 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 no. So, okay, I see what you mean. So, to produce this, to produce this individual, dad, mom, okay? The bread comes from dad, this comes from mom. Now, this person is making, or this individual is making his gametes, okay? So, to make the gametes, you'll have this thing split into four. Now, each one of them will go fuse with another another gamete to produce another individual, right? So this is just the, the, the precursor to the egg and sperm, that's it, okay? Am I clear? Or it's kind of hard to... <laughs> no, maybe, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. This is why people look more uh, like their dad or mom than, you know. It's because you probably got a lot from your dad and less from your mom or things like this. Make sense? Okay, cool. Yeah, this is a bit uh, hard to imagine, but uh, hopefully it will become clearer, okay? So convention covered. Anyways, just remember that the gametes produced is the combination of all the combinations that are possible for each gene. So in this case, because we're talking about two gene inheritance, we're talking about four combinations. Okay? Let's do it again. So let's take this uh, parental line of whatever. Let's keep it uh, hair color and, uh, and height. Okay? So when this person here produces... I guess if I do it this way, it's going to be easier. So when this person produces the gametes, okay, there's only one possible gamete produced, right? Because you can either have big A, big B, big A, big B, big A, big B, or big A, big B, okay? So only one type of gamete produced. Same thing for this one here. Because it's all the same, they will produce only one type of gamete, which is small a, small b, okay? Fertilization happens. Then there's only one possible combination, right? because you're getting this gamete, which has only this genotype with this one, so you end up with a diploid organism that is homozygous, uh, heterozygous for both genes. Make sense? Okay, so the reason why I'm showing you this, it's because I wanna just talk about recombinants and, uh, uh, recombinants and all that. So, for example, okay, because questions always like to cross, okay? You get the first generation, then you cross it with something, okay? This is just a hypothetical cross, okay? Let's say we cross it with a tester. What's gonna happen is that you're gonna end up with four different genotypes, and you can do the Punnett square here. It will look like this, okay? So you produce, the, so at this stage here, you produce the gametes from each one. So this one can make big A, big B, big A, small B, small A, big B, small A, small B. That's the four gametes it can produce, which are right here. And same thing for the other one. This one can only produce one type of gamete, which contains the small a, small b. If you cross all this, you'll end up with a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio of progeny. This is your F2 progeny, okay? Imagine them peas, humans, whichever, okay? <laughs> um, the two that look like the parents are called the parental types. 
okay? This is just some terminology that's gonna introduce us the topic for next week. These are the parental types because they look like their parents. Big A, big B, small A, small B. This is the parent here, and then this one looks exactly like this guy, okay? The other two, which take different combinations of the, of the chromosomes, will be called recombinants. Make sense? So if I tell you the recombinants, there is this much, and then the parental, there is this much, you can figure out the ratios, right? Easy? Okay. Next week it will make more sense because recombinants is important for linked genes. Okay? Now the question about how does the cell decide how to get which chromosome to which cell, uh, final cell. Okay? So the spindle, this group of proteins that attached to both sides of the cell will make fibers. And the fibers just go and grab a chromosome and bring it. They don't think like, I want this one and I want that one, right? So if the, the chromosomes are aligned like this one on top of each other, the spindle can skip this one here and then just go grab the other one and bring it on this side, okay? So this is what happens here. So you can have two different ways of them aligning. Let's say, for example, we start with this individual, which um, had its replication happen, okay? DNA, um, DNA uh, replication happened, right? So two copies of uh, big A, big A, two copies of small A, small A. So four copies of the same gene, right? So there's two ways they can align on the, on the equatorial plane of the cell. You can have the big A chromosome next to the big B, or you can have the big A next to the small B, or whatever, okay? So when the spindle comes, it doesn't think, Oh, let me uh, get this one from that, and right, it just grabs at random. And this is what happens. This is what we mean by independent assortment. They are not dependent on each other, right? This the spindle just goes, grabs chromosome, bring it to the to the side, okay. And uh, that's pretty much it, okay. This is what Mendel's second law is saying. So every time you get a problem about crosses related to independent assortment. Uh, so the two genes, let's say, for example, just think directly gametes. And then from gametes, think zygote. And then from zygote, you, you have your individual. And then they will probably ask you to cross it again with something else. Gametes, zygote, gametes. Okay? Make sense? Good. There's a different type or a different way of, um, of inheriting genes. So what happens if they are on the same chromosome? Do they go together or are they still separated? Yeah. Exactly. So let's say the two genes are on the same chromosome. If they are very close to each other, they will go together. So then the inheritance of these genes does not follow Mendel's second law of inheritance. And this will cover it next week. It's called linked inheritance, okay? In this case, again, just to repeat so it makes sense, these two are from dad. These two are from, uh, well, this side here is from mom. This side is from dad. Um, and the two genes are on the same chromosome. Because they are on the same chromosome, most of the time they will be inherited together. So they don't follow Mendel's second law, okay? So if A goes, Big A goes, big B goes automatically with it, okay? The way we write this is like this. Now we need the slash because we're saying big A is next to B slash small A is next to B. So they're on the same chromosome. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. So uh, we'll do a uh, link gene analysis uh, next lecture, and we'll take a look at how genes, how crossovers happen, and if the distance between the two genes is too far, they will follow Mendel's way of being inherited. If they are too close, they will go together, and there is a distance that we'll calculate. Okay? Make sense? Yeah. Uh, if uh, there is the if the distance is above 50, 50 units, um, so they could be on the same chromosome, but at the end, right? And uh, so crossover does not happen. 
Yeah, exactly. And then so no crossover. Wait, you're mixing me up. So if they're close together, they go together. If they're far, they don't go together. That's it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. Okay, last convention. If we don't know where they are, are they on the same chromosome or on different chromosomes, then we'll add a dot in between them. Or this symbol called the interpunct. Okay. So, the questions that will be asked, for example, in the tutorial or whatever, will say the following. I have these two genes with a dot like this. Figure out if they're on the same chromosome or not. And this is dependent on the progeny. If you get a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, they're on different chromosomes, right? If you get something super weird, they're probably on the same chromosome, OK? And then you'll see that, let's say we have three genes here. You'll see that two of them follow Mendel's inheritance. And then one of them, uh, and then the, so the combination of two follow Mendel. And the other two, they have a weird ratio. So you know that those two are very close, and the third one is far. Make sense? And we'll see all of this uh, next lecture and next tutorial. OK? Nice question for you guys. <laughs> so if uh, I wanted to write this using the conventions that we learned, how would you write this? Actually, you know what? I'll test you. <laughs> Don't want to put you on the spot, but we have to practice, okay? <laughs> so this here, would you write it? First, are they on the same chromosome or different chromosome? Different, okay. So that directly tells you semicolon, right? Okay, so then the alleles are big A, big A. So you have a choice. You can do big A slash big A, or you can do AA, just next to each other. Semicolon, big B, big B. Make sense? Okay. Don't be shy, guys. Confident in answering. <laughs> uh, okay. Oof, let me see what slide are we at because uh, see one lecture you're uh, super slow, the other you're super fast. Okay. Uh, how do I do this? How do I do this? Do I cover it? Okay, I cover it. OK, let's review the dihybrid cross that we did last week from uh, Mendel. OK? So Mendel first started by studying one gene, the inheritance of one gene. And then he went on to two genes. So the two genes that he followed were the shape of the seed and the color of the seed. So let me get my laser. So he took two seeds, which are home, well, this one is homozygous for the uh, round shape gene. So it has two double big R's. Uh, and then recessive, homozygous recessive for the color gene, which gives green, OK? And then he took a wrinkled seed, which is recessive for the gene for the shape of the seed, and homozygous dominant for the yellow color, uh, well, the, the gene for the color, which gives yellow, OK? The only gametes, so you see the point here? It means he didn't know if they were on the same chromosome or not, OK? The only gametes produced from this are big R, small y, even if there is crossover, right? There's no other different possibility, right? So same thing for the other one, small r, big y. And these are pure lines. These are the gametes. And then when the gametes fuse to form the zygote, it becomes a heterozygous for the two genes. And he realized that it only gave him round and yellow colored seeds. This already tells you that the round allele is dominant to the other one, and the yellow is dominant to the green one. OK? Then he selfed these plants, so crossed this plant with itself, and it gave him this ratio here. OK? 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. This is the exact same thing as two, three to one ratios, one inside the other, nested, OK? How did he get to the, these numbers here? Well, let's just skip all this. OK, 
So you do again your Punnett square. Same way we do it for one gene, but now you do it for two genes. So you have your gametes. Now, if you're producing the gametes from this one here, there's few possibilities. There's big R, big Y, big R, small y, small r, big y, small r, small y. Okay, so you put them all here. And because you're self in it, it's the same ones here. Okay? And then you just go on and write them all in here, and it gives you this. Okay? And from here, you can figure out the phenotype of each one by looking at their genotypes. Okay? Knowing that the F1 is round and yellow, you know that the R is dominant, the big R is dominant, and the Y is dominant. So the round shape and yellow color are the dominant genes. So if you see them here in the heterozygous individual, you know that it's going to be yellow because there's at least one big Y. Okay? In this case here, there's two small Ys, so it's going to be green. Capish? Easy? Good. Next. Let's mess the whole thing up, okay? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Exactly. So there's a specific ratio that they're uh, segregating into, okay? Um, well, you'll see the difference next week when they're segregating together. Uh, you'll see the difference in the progeny numbers. Okay, so that only applies to humans, plants, uh, animals, all that. For yeast, their adult stage is not diploid, it's haploid. Okay? Then they mate and they end up, you have to imagine yeast as just a single cell. They mate and they produce this secondary or interme intermediate stage that is diploid. Okay? And this is the stage that undergoes meiosis to produce the tetrides, which are basically the gametes of the yeast. Okay? So when we're talking about yeast, we have to think about it a little bit differently. We are not starting from a diploid and then undergoing meiosis to produce the four gametes. We're starting with a haploid, which fuses with the haploid and then produces a diploid, okay? Just a little bit different, but the rest remains the same. So in yeast, our, let's assume we have these two uh, yeast cells, one is R positive for, I don't know, let's say penicillin resistance or whatever, some sort of resistance gene, okay? And then this one does not have it. Then they fuse, form a diploid state, which is uh, heterozygous for the resistance gene. And then they produce their myocytes, uh, their, um, sorry, their gametes. And they do this by undergoing the same thing. So DNA replication, separation of the chromosomes, and then forming this tetrad here, the four gametes we talked about, okay? Uh, what else? These are spores, okay? That's, that's the difference. We uh, have sperm egg, they have spores, okay? Good. Yeah. I'm gonna find the middle ground because we have still a lot of slides, but that's okay. Okay. Do you have any questions for the previous part? No? Okay. If you do, uh, come see me in the office first. Go and know your TAs first. Make them work a little bit. And then if that doesn't work, come see me, OK? Um, I'll be happy to help. Uh, next. So what we've seen up to now is only autosomal inheritance. So this is linked to the chromosomes that are exactly the same for male and female, OK? There's two chromosomes that we have uh, that are sex chromosomes. They're different from male and female. The X and Y chromosomes. Okay? This allows for the generation of diamorphic uh, species, which means male looks like this, female looks like that. Okay? Different, different kind of... Um, it's pretty similar in almost everything, but few differences. Okay? This is called sexual dimorphism. Homogametic sex means the... the means two similar uh, chromosomes, let's say, okay? So females are homogametic. They have two X chromosomes. Males have XY chromosome, okay? So they're heterogametic sex. Now, what's important to know about these is that they're different chromosomes. So they have regions that are similar, like the pseudo-autosomal region, which has the same genes almost, but the rest is different. So 
you don't have two copies of these in your cells if you're a male. You only have one because you have the X chromosome, which is unique, and the Y chromosome, which is unique, okay? For genes that are found only on one sex chromosome, we call them hemizygous. So hetero means two different copies. Hemi means only one, okay? There's no second copy. Make sense? The Y chromosome is the maleness chromosome, let's say. It uh, has genes to make the uh, male structures, okay? But it's also important uh, to prevent menstruation and all that. So if you don't have it, then you do undergo menstruation. If you do have it, then it prevents that, okay? Because technically, you can kind of induce this stuff, okay? So X linkage versus Y linkage. Let's uh, cover this. Can you see properly? Okay, let's, so X linkage and Y linkage were studied in a fruit fly called Drosophila because it has the XY chromosome like us. Plants, sometimes they have three of them, so W, X, and Z, which is kind of the same, a little bit different, but Drosophila, it's very small, makes babies super fast, so you can study it in the lab, okay? Uh, you're not gonna study XY chromosome on humans, it's gonna take you years to you know, figure out what's happening to them, okay? So one of the genes that we're looking at is the color of the eyes. So if you had the wild type copy, let's go here. If you had the wild type copy of the gene, which is found only on the X chromosome, you end up with red eyes. If you had the recessive copy, you end up with white eyes. Up to now, make sense? Good. So the female, who was heterozygous for both, uh, for both uh, copies of the gene, because they have two X chromosomes, had red eyes. If you made it with a male, which has only one X chromosome, and it, ha it has the recessive copy, which is white, then you'll produce this here, this F1 generation. So this, instead of doing it like allele, allele, you go chromosome, 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 chromosome. Make sense? Okay. So in this case, you can inherit either an X chromosome from your dad or a Y chromosome from your dad, and then a X, two X chromosomes from your mom. But because they're the same, we're just putting it as one here. Okay. And then these are the combinations that are possible. Can you see how, can you see how uh, the male... Uh, if he had had only the W plus copy, it would have red eyes, right? And because it only has one X chromosome and it got the recessive copy, then it ends up with white eyes, right? While this heterozygous here individual, because it has two copies, but one of them is W plus, then it has red eyes. Make sense? Kind of? Okay. Let's assume, and then obviously if it's Y linked, let's say for example, Y linked inheritance, all, if the father has it, the kids, the, the male kids will have it, okay? Because he gives them the Y chromosome, it comes from him, okay? The X chromosome, you can be a little bit lucky depending on which ones you get, okay? But the Y, if you get it, you get it, that's it. Okay, um, so these are just more examples of these crosses. So again, remember in this case, when we're talking about sex-linked inheritance, you have to think about X and Y chromosome and not about alleles and, and, you know, right? So you'd put the chromosomes here. The Y chromosome does not have their gene for eye color, and so we don't really care about it, okay? Yeah? Exactly. They do. So here, so if we start here, this one here is red because it has one X chromosome with a good copy. But this one here has one X chromosome with only the recessive copy. So it has white eyes, right? And then if you cross them, you'll end up with this progeny here. Because the male got the X chromosome from his mom, right? Then he suddenly gets red eyes. And then uh, in this case here, the mom had only white eyes, and so because he got the X chromosome from the mom, then he has white eyes. So. Exactly. Uh, if it's by itself, it's either you get the red or white, depending on the copy you have. Okay? Special cases. These are two things that happen in society. Probably they passed 
by you, but you didn't know. So these are called, these are two syndromes called Turner syndrome and Klinefelter syndrome, uh, where you have uh, one copy of X chromosome and no copy of the Y chromosome. So you end up as a female, but short stature and fertile and things like this, okay? Klinefelter is the opposite. You have two X chromosomes, one Y chromosome, and then you end up with features from both sexes, okay? So you're like a mix of both, okay? Uh, both of them have reduced fertility because, you know, sex chromosomes are linked to fertility and if it's messed up, well, it's messed up. And then uh, the one on the left is lucky because they don't get their period, so, <laughs> right? But at the same time, can't get kids, etc. okay? Make sense? Good. I think I'm going to skip this and show it next week, but it's just to show you the different patterns that happen with... Uh, inheritance okay for example here if you see the whole pedigree is empty probably it's autosomal recessive okay if you see every generation that has it probably it's dominant okay one copy leads to the disease and then I'll, I'll, I'll cover this next week okay I want to kind of get to some stuff okay so another type of inheritance is uh, inheritance related to organelles because chloroplasts, which are found in plants, and mitochondria, which are found in all cells, they have DNA also. And because they have DNA, they, there is an inheritance pattern that happens with them, okay? So if we look at just this picture, the egg, you can see it with your eyes, okay? While sperm, you can't, because it has a very small uh, cytoplasm, okay? So you get most of your cytoplasm from the egg. And what's in the cytoplasm? Well, obviously the mitochondria and the chloroplast. So if your mom, for example, has a disease related to mitochondria, you will automatically get it, okay? Because you get all your mitochondria from the mom. Make sense? And then this is just an example here to show you, to show you that cells, so if you take a white female, uh, white colored female plant, okay? and then you made it with a male cell that doesn't have any chloroplast, and then you'll end up with the chloroplast from the mom, which is basically white, okay? Or the, the pigment here. Um, if the mom has chloroplasts that are green, you end up with green colored. E easy to understand, right? Okay. Uh, what else? So pattern of uh, inheritance for organelles. It's maternal, okay? So if the mom has it, everyone has it. Okay. And then these are all the genes related really, that you have on your mitochondrial chromosome that can uh, cause problems if your mom has it. Okay. Uh, anemia. So usually, like uh, this, mostly happens in women. Uh, anemia. So if the f mother has it, most of the time the daughter will have it also. Okay. Uh, things like this. Deafness. Uh, heart problems not being able to see properly, <laughs> myopathy, problems with eyes. Anybody knows what uh, polycystic ovary syndrome? Pre yeah. Oh, you do. <laughs> okay, it's pretty common. It's pretty common. Uh, there are genes that are found on the mitochondrial DNA that cause this, and basically it makes the female um, have problems with ovulation, uh, hormonal imbalance, depending on how... Um, how uh, strong the phenotype is, okay? Uh, so if you want to read about this, it's related to the mitochondria. And usually, if you look at the family where they have the PCOS, it's the short for polycystic ovary syndrome, you'll see that the mom has it, the grandmother has it, or some sort, okay? Make sense? Oh, my God. One day, we're super fast. One day, we don't have time. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave the questions for next week, okay? What I want to show you though is something here, chat GPT, okay? So I asked it the simplest question ever, is the myocyte haploid or diploid? And it gave me the wrong answer. It's saying that it's haploid, single set of chromosomes, and then undergoes meiosis to produce haploid gametes. So how do you start with haploid and then end up with haploid gametes? It doesn't, it doesn't work. And I knew it was gonna give me this mistake, this error because it's thinking about yeast and humans and mixing up the whole thing, okay? So if you're using this for your classes, this is just a uh, uh, free info here. 
uh, be careful with it, okay? Because stupid, easy questions like this, and it's not able to answer. Okay, now you guys know better than ChatGPT, okay? <laughs> you know that it's deployed, right? <laughs> I don't want to see no haploid on the exam. <laughs> yeah? Uh, for uh, the Mayo set is always deployed, but it's thinking about uh, the initial stage where it starts and then the Mayo set that it produces. So it's, it's wrong. This is wrong. Okay, it's always deployed because the Mayo set produces the gametes, and for you to produce four different gametes, you need something deployed that duplicates to make four and then divides into four. Make sense? Okay. Good. See you later, alligator. <laughs> <laughs>